If you're not using Google Analytics to track, record, and analyze your website activity, you're missing out on essential data that can make all the difference between marketing campaign success and catastrophic failure. It may seem like a daunting task, but once you understand how to leverage the data that Google Analytics provides, you'll be able to make informed decisions to grow your business. Today, I'll be focusing on the Google Analytics metrics that you absolutely need to know as a small business owner. If you wanna feel more confident in Google Analytics and learn how to use that information to improve your website, and your services, keep watching. Welcome back to our channel. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm Morgan from Life Marketing, the digital marketing agency that helps small businesses grow. I'm excited to talk to you about how you can use Google Analytics to improve your website and your business. I'll also walk you through the most important Google Analytics metrics to focus on for your small business. Watch through to the end where I cover essential conversion metrics. We all love those conversions. If you haven't yet, go ahead and just boop that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss out on our small business marketing tips. First, let's look at what Google Analytics is and why you should use it. If you already know what Google Analytics is, use the timestamps below to jump ahead to the next section. If you're pretty new to the world of analytics, let's talk about what it is and why you should use it. Google Analytics is one of, if not the most, popular analytics tools that we use to measure the activity on your website and the performance of your pages, your content, your marketing campaigns, your products, and more. These unique insights help you ensure your website is producing the results that you want. Here are some of the reasons I like Google Analytics. First of all, it's a completely free tool. And if it's free, it's for me. <laughs> Number two, it helps enhance your understanding of your Google Ads campaigns and your other marketing efforts. This is beyond what you can see in the dashboard of your social ads program, for example. Number three, you can track and measure traffic from all sources and see what they do while they're on your website. And number four, you can use the information in Google Analytics to improve your website, understand your customers and their needs, and increase your ROI, which is your return on investment. If you aren't using Google Analytics on your website, you're missing out on key metrics that you need to grow your business. Here's a quick vocab check-in. When I say metrics, here's what I mean. Metrics are quantitative measurements of data. Your metrics are the numbers, and Google Analytics tracks a lot of metrics. Some are more complex than others. I'll explain the most important metrics that you should pay attention to, but first, I want to take you on a quick tour of the Google Analytics dashboard. The Analytics dashboard is separated into four main reports. I'll cover the specific metrics that are important for each in just a few minutes. Let's look at those now. The first is audience. This section focuses on your customers. You'll find information about their demographics, their interests, the devices they're using, and their behaviors on your website. As a marketer, you can use this information to learn more about your customers and inform your marketing segments. The next section is acquisition. This section focuses on how your audience gets to your website. Where are they coming from? Social networks, search engines, website referrals, your email campaign? Marketers use this information to clearly establish which channels marketing tactics are the most effective. The third is behavior. Your customers have found your website, right? But what are they doing while they're there? That's what the behavior section can tell you. You'll be able to see what pages they visited, how long they were there for, and tons of other information. Marketers like to use this data to improve the user experience and make sure that their website has important information. And finally, we have conversions. Did your website visitors take any action on your website? Your conversion could be a sale, a sign up, a click, whatever action it is that you want them to take that's valuable for your business. Marketers like me use this information to make sure visitors are taking that action and improve the customer journey, like improving the checkout process. Now let's look at the specific metrics that you should use in each section and why they're important for your small business. Let's first look at audience metrics that you should know. The first one that I'll cover is number of users and sessions. The users metric measures the number of unique visitors to your website. Every time a new visitor comes to your site, they're assigned a unique ID. If they visit your website again in the future using the same browser, they won't be counted as a new user. That does mean though, if they are on a different browser, they will count as a new user. The sessions metric measures every time someone visits your site and is actively engaged. As soon as someone enters your site, a session is started. A session ends after 30 minutes of inactivity by default. You can adjust this so the session lasts from a few seconds to a few hours, depending on your needs. However, most small businesses can leave the session duration at 30 minutes and have plenty of data. Each user can have multiple sections. So if I visit your website, leave and come back an hour later, that's a new session if you've left it on that 30 minute default. The next metric is average session duration. This measures the average amount of time that a user spends on your site during a single session. You can use this information to measure user engagement in relation to the content on your website. How? 
Well, if the average duration is low, that could indicate that your content does not pertain to your audience's interest, and you may want to adjust your content strategy. Or it could mean your audience couldn't quickly find what they were looking for. Or there's not a clear call to action, so they don't really know what to do. Next, you want to look at average pages per session. This metric shows the average number of pages that a visitor navigated to before they left your website or made a purchase. Just like the session duration, this can also give you insights into user engagement and it can help you develop the perfect navigation structure for your website. The next metric is ratio of new to returning visitors. This is a very important metric because it can mean a few different things. First, you can see whether your campaigns are attracting new or returning visitors. This will be important depending on your goals. Second, it can show you how many of your site's visitors are willing to come back to your site. If you have a high percentage of returning visitors, that's a good indicator that you're doing something right on your website to retain your customers and keep people coming back. Third, a higher rate of returning visitors may accompany an increase in lifetime value. If you have a high percentage of new customers, this may indicate your business is in a growth period. Both are good things. Next, we'll look at bounce rate. Bounce rate is the percentage of website visitors that leave after viewing a single page. You've likely been part of a bounce rate. Have you ever landed on a site that didn't have what you were looking for so you left? That's bounce. A high bounce rate can indicate a lot of different things, but here's what I look for first. One, are there technical issues with the website or the user? Two, is the content on this page relevant to the visitor? Does this page have what they're looking for? Three, is there a clear call to action on the page? Four, are our marketing campaigns driving the right traffic to the website? If you have a high bounce rate, you should segment your visitors to find out where the specific issues are coming from. Here's what I would look at. The first is demographics. You'll learn more about your visitors, like their ages and their gender. This is important because you need to know who's visiting your website and who is leaving immediately. This will help you target the right people when you're running ads on social media and search engines. And it will help inform the content that you put on your website. Next is geography. Not just general geography, though that's important. You want to discover the locations and languages of your site's visitors. You'll get a good idea of where to target your campaigns. Maybe New York loves your business, but California couldn't care less. Now you know to avoid ad spend in California and increase ad spend in New York. Let's move on to some acquisition metrics that you should know. Now that you know who is visiting your website, it's time to find out how they got there. Under acquisition, we look at traffic. In the All Traffic section of Acquisition, you can see which channels are directing the most traffic to your website. Google Analytics will track traffic from all over the web, including traffic from organic search. These would be visitors who got to your website by searching on Google or other search engines. These folks did not click an ad to get to your site. Next is Paid Search. These are visitors who got to your website from a paid search ad. Next is Direct Traffic. These are visitors who don't have a traceable referral source. Typically, they're people who type your URL directly into their search bar. For most small businesses, this traffic will be coming from returning customers. Next is referral traffic. These are visitors who got to your website by clicking on a link from a different site. Then we've got display. These are visitors who got to your website by clicking on an ad that ran on another website, like a banner ad or an image ad in a display campaign. We also have email traffic. These, of course, will be visitors who got to your website by clicking on a link in one of your email campaigns. We also have social traffic. As you can guess, these are visitors who got to your website from a social network, such as your business's Facebook or Instagram account. And there's a nice other category. If you're using any UTM parameters to track your campaigns, the website visitors coming from those campaigns appear under other. Leave a starfish emoji if you'd like me to cover UTM codes in the future. Sometimes the traffic in all section doesn't give you quite enough information. For a deeper dive, you'll want to look at the source section. Sources represent the specific domains that are sending traffic to your site. For example, the traffic could be social broadly, but what network? Source will show you the specifics in the form of domains, like Instagram.com. The next acquisition metric that you need to pay close attention to is Google Ads. If you've linked your Google Ads account to your analytics account, which you should do immediately if you haven't already, then you can't find a ton of insightful data specific to your Google Ads campaigns. If you're new to Google Ads, check out our playlist for helpful videos, tutorials, and explanations. I'll put the link in the description. Once you've properly linked your account, you can analyze the customer activity on your website that came from an ad click or impressions. You're able to take a look at all of your Google Ad campaigns and see how well they're doing. The next section is campaigns. This is how you'll measure the success of your individual marketing campaigns. You can see all of the metrics that I mentioned before in the audience report. 
things like users, sessions, and bounce rates. But these metrics will be segmented by campaign. You'll be able to tell which campaigns or efforts have produced the best results for your business and your website. Now let's move on to behavior metrics that you should know. Ah, the behavior report, one of my favorites. This focuses on the individual pages of your website rather than the website as a whole. In the overview section of the behavior report, you're able to see the average time spent on each page, unique page views, and their bounce rate. Let's look at some of the most important metrics. But before we do that, here is a message about our new coaching program. Hello, we just helped a small business make over $1.5 million through Facebook advertising. After managing millions of dollars of ad spend for thousands of small businesses and creating thousands of social posts to help businesses connect with their customers, we know how to get results. And we want to help small businesses get results too. So we've decided to give away our knowledge, learning experiences, resources, tools, and feedback to help you achieve results for your digital marketing efforts. If you want to learn the blueprint for success, the best practices from some of the fastest growing companies in the world, get access to all the tools you'll need and get live expert guidance from yours truly. Stop what you're doing and sign up for our coaching program today. Okay, we're back. Behavior flow. The behavior flow data visually shows the path that visitors take on your site. The flow begins with showing the first page that the visitors saw, something that we call the landing page in marketing. After that, you'll see each of the actions taken on the pages and the pages that they visited before they exited the site. This shows you which pages are most engaging and if people are taking all the steps that they should be taking plus where they've been in your website. In behavior, we can also see site content. In the site content section, you can take a look at the specific landing and exit pages for your site. Under the landing pages section, you're able to see acquisition behavior and conversion metrics for each of your site's landing pages. This gives you insight on whether or not your pages are engaging enough and if they're leading to the conversions that you expected. Under the exit page section, you'll see metrics about the last page your visitors viewed before they left your site. Utilize this info to see which pages are the main cause of visitors leaving. Maybe they leave at the product page. Maybe right before checkout. Maybe they spend all of their time on your blog and they never even visit your store. If you notice a trend of users leaving on the same pages, you should consider updating the content on those pages or adjusting your strategy. Next is site speed. The site speed section is pretty self-explanatory, honestly. It tells you what the average loading times are for different aspects of your website. The website's speed plays a huge part in the overall user experience, so it is really important that you find ways to keep your loading speeds down. That's pretty simple nowadays for most people. Most website platforms make that pretty easy these days. But if your site is struggling, Google Analytics usually provides you with suggestions on how to fix it. Let's move on to conversion metrics. Finally, I hear you saying, we've made our way to the conversion report. So what should you look for when you get there? Let's look at goals. This is where you'll summarize your conversion performance. This section won't house any data until you predefine your website goals in the Google Analytics settings. You can set four types of goals. The first is a destination goal. You'll choose a goal for a destination page, like when a thank you page loads after an email sign up. This would be a great way to measure collecting leads. The second is duration. You can set a goal for a session that lasts a certain amount of time. For example, set a five minute duration goal for the page that houses your five minute explainer video to ensure that people watched it. Number three, pages or screens per session. To track engagement or interest, set a goal for a certain number of page views per session. Number four, event. Track when a desired action is triggered. Examples of events could be playing a video or clicking a button or signing up for a list. Remember, these all have to be specified beforehand or Google Analytics won't know what to track. So if you get in here the first time and you don't see any data, don't panic. You still need to do some setup. Once your goals have been defined though, you will be given metrics to track these conversions. The first one is goal completions. This would be the total number of conversions for your goal. The second is goal value. This will count the monetary value of those conversions, if there is one. The next is goal conversion rate. This is the rate of conversions divided by the total number of sessions. And abandonment rate. This is the rate of goals that were not completed divided by the number of goals that were started. Now that you're armed with this information, what will you be able to learn about your customers and their relationships with your website? That's not a rhetorical question. I want you to really think about how this can help you. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what you'd like to see next. I'll see you soon. Happy marketing.